Let's talk about proper pipetting technique. So pipetting in chemistry is so important. It's really impossible to understate the importance of pipetting in chemistry because the accurate measurement of solution volumes is essential in so many applications, running reactions, performing analytical tests, all kinds of stuff like that. And you don't want pipetting to be a barrier between you and success in chemistry. So let's talk about proper pipetting technique. First thing to understand is the types of devices that are at your disposal for pipetting. There are two types of pipettes we'll use in general chemistry labs. The first is a volumetric pipette. These are distinguished by a very large, very bold volume on a central bulb-like projection here. This is a volumetric pipette. And there's a single line on it. This is probably difficult to see, but there's a single marking about maybe a third or so or a quarter up the stem above that bulb. The second type of pipette is called serological. It's got markings on it, kind of like a graduated cylinder, um, running from zero near the top or maybe near the middle down to the total maximum volume this is designed to deliver, which in this case is five milliliters. So when you want to deliver a precise volume that is generally a pretty round number, something like 10 milliliters, you'd use a volumetric pipette. And if you wanted to go up to 20, and still be really precise, you could use this twice. But if you need to deliver kind of a weird volume, for example, you're running a reaction and you need a particular volume, maybe to a tenth of a milliliter um, of solution for a reaction, then you would use a serological. I would say more commonly we're going to use serological pipettes for transfers in the general chemistry lab. Now, you know you need some volume of liquid to accomplish something in the laboratory. Where do you go from there? Well, what you're going to have in the laboratory is solution more than likely in a reagent bottle. You may prepare the solution yourself in something like a volumetric flask, but typically it'll have been prepared already in a reagent bottle that looks like this or the one liter version. It is very important not to dip a pipette directly into the reagent bottle. The reason for that is there might be some contaminants on the pipette that you do not want going in the reagent bottle, which is a communal um, holding device, if you will, for the entire lab section. So you don't want to contaminate that. So bring a beaker with you to the hood or wherever the reagent bottle is stored and just pour out a little bit of liquid um, that you can use to pipette. You want to use a beaker that's pretty well matched to the amount of liquid you, you need uh, because you want to have some height in here when you're pipetting. It'll just make your life, make your life easier that way. Always make sure to cap the reagent bottle back, set it aside, set it back into the hood, what have you. So let's say we needed 10 milliliters of this aqueous cobalt solution um, in a test tube. If we wanted to be really precise about that, we could use the volumetric pipette. So I'll demonstrate how to use that first. To use a volumetric pipette, first stick the end of the pipette in the liquid. This device in blue is called a pipette bulb, and this is what actually supplies the suction to pull liquid up into the um, pipette. In the old days, people would use their mouths to do this, but do not ever pipette by mouth. That's one of those things we say nowadays that's just kind of meant to be funny, like nobody would ever think to pipette by mouth, right? But just, just to um, keep pace with the chemist of old, I'll say never pipette by mouth. Squeeze the bulb first before it goes onto the end of the pipette. And make sure, by the way, that you have a little plastic piece on the end of the pipette bulb. Otherwise, it'll get stuck on the end, and that's not actually what you want. You want the ability to put on, to seal, and remove this, to break the seal at the top of the pipette very quickly. So squeeze it first, place it there to seal it. It doesn't have to be super tight. You just need a good enough seal to get suction, and then start to release your grip. And you'll notice the liquid coming up the pipette and filling that bulb-like area. That bulb was precision crafted so that when you fill to the line, you'll end up with 10 milliliters of liquid. Now here's the tricky part. Where do we go from here as we're filling up? Well, we're just about to hit the line, and as soon as we hit it, you might think, okay, now I need to move the pipette over the test tube, right, transfer it. Wrong! You want to fill above the level of the line, because we're going to fine-tune 
with our finger. You don't want to let liquid come up into the pipette bowl, but it's totally fine and it's strongly recommended that you actually fill above the level of liquid and then replace quickly with your finger. So I almost did that too quickly to notice, but as soon as it's above the line at a level you're comfortable with, remove the pipette bulb and place your finger over the top. That'll prevent flow down the pipette. From here, you can gently let up. So there are a couple of different techniques for lowering the liquid level. A lot of people are fond of gently rotating the pipette. This works well if you really want to get that meniscus right on the line if you're accuracy obsessed, as many students are. Or you can gently lift your finger, but be careful with lifting your finger because as soon as the atmosphere sees the top of that liquid level, it's going to start pushing pretty hard. So we've let the liquid come down, and this is, by the way, another reason not to pipette directly from a reagent bottle because you'll be putting back in some of the liquid, right? We pulled above the mark and we're putting back in some of the liquid. That's inevitable, so just make your life easier and the lives of everyone else in your section easier and pour into a beaker. Don't pipe that directly from the reagent bottle. So we've got the bottom of the meniscus right on the line now and we can just go right over the test tube and simply let go. As this is filling, what you're going to notice when this is done filling is that there's some liquid left in the bottom of the pipette. That's just kind of an inevitability of the fact that glass and water like each other. They're both polar um, compounds. Right? So the question arises what to do with this amount of liquid left in the pipette. And you may be tempted to use the bulb to blow out the rest of that liquid. Don't do that. Again, these volumetric pipettes are precision crafted so that that little bit of liquid left in the bottom of the pipette is not factored in to this 10 milliliter figure. In other words, do not blow out the bottom of this. They're meant to hold on to that last little bit of liquid. And this, what we have in the test tube, is now pretty damn close to 10 milliliters. So that's the volumetric pipette in a nutshell. Let's talk about the serological. The serological is in some ways a little more tricky because you have a variety of volumes to choose from, right, depending on the marking that you want to do. So, for example, we might be working with a reaction that, let's say, precipitates a, a cobalt complex or a cobalt compound. And maybe we only want a certain mass of that compound out of our reaction, so we only want to use, let's say, 2.6 milliliters of cobalt solution in this. So how do we go about doing this? Well, the first thing, before you even dip the pipette in, identify visually where you're trying to go on the serological pipette. If you're being really careful about serological technique, actually, the easiest thing to do is fill to the zero line. Fill to the zero line and then use your finger to deliver downward. You'll notice that the scale actually increases as you go down. Zero here, one, two, three, etc. That's because this device is meant to be used in a fill first and then deliver type manner. So you can fill up to zero and then ease up off your finger to deliver liquid down to the 2.6 line. That's probably the easiest way to work with this. It also prevents contamination to some degree because you can fill up to the zero line and then deliver back into the beaker just a very tiny amount of liquid. So you'll see what I mean in a second. Bottom line is our initial goal is to fill to zero and we're going to let this drip out into the test tube until we get down to the 2.6 line. Basic technique is the same as before. Pipette goes all the way in. Keep the tip of the pipette in the liquid the entire time. Just keep it down at the bottom, leaving enough room that it can actually pull liquid up that it's not forming a seal with the glass in the bottom of the beaker. Squeeze the pipette bulb first. Plastic part goes onto the end and begin letting up to pull the liquid up into this thing. So we filled to the zero line here. I like to do with the serological what we saw before, pulling up a little bit above and then letting your finger do the final adjustments. So that might cause a little bit of contamination, but that's okay. So I'm just barely letting up. You can also do the twist technique here to lower the liquid level. And now it's just about on the zero line. The bottom of the meniscus is just about there. So we want to deliver 2.6 milliliters, and so at this point I can transfer this over here to the test tube where I'm ready to deliver and use the exact same technique I just used. Essentially, very gently twist the tube or kind of let up pressure off of my finger and allow the liquid to be delivered. 
So we just passed 1, there's 1 1.5, and 2. As you get closer, you want to be really careful with this. And be aware of parallax errors as well. So if you're looking down on the meniscus, do your best to somehow get eye level with the liquid, eye level with the top of the liquid. So come down a little bit, gentle twisting motion again, and we're back to the 2.6 line now. So we've delivered 2.6 milliliters in this thing. This is a five mil serological, so there's what? 3.4 milliliters left. I can just send that back into the beaker and I'm good to go. This is sort of a volume measurement by difference, right? We pulled up to the zero line and then squirted out until we got down to the 2.6 line. You'll notice on many of these uh, serological pipettes, and this one is no exception, that there are also numbers counting down from the top in a manner that you're probably a little more familiar and a little more comfortable with. And you can use these to pipette as well. So if you would rather fill to a level and then just deliver everything, you can do that as well. So for example, the smaller numbers on this serological, there's no zero level. Zero is nothing in the pipette. Talk a little bit more about that in a second. Here's one, two, three, four, etc. So another way to deliver 2.6 milliliters from this thing would be to pull up and then get the liquid level at 2.6 initially. 2.6 using the smaller scale, the one that's counting down as we go from the top to the bottom. Not the larger numbers, but the smaller numbers. So right now I have it at 2.6. Need to be really careful to hold that seal so that liquid does not escape while I'm transferring it over. Same as the volumetric pipette, really. And then, and you'll notice, by the way, if you look really carefully, that this is the 3.1 line counting down from the top. And that should make sense. The sum of the two needs to be five. And I'll release the seal and let it rip. Now we have the same issue that we had with the volumetric. There's liquid left in the bottom of the serological. The question arises, should I deliver this or not? If you think about it for a second, there's no zero line on this. The zero line is assumed to be nothing in the serological pipette. So for the serological, you do actually have to blow it out, like so. Just use your pipette pole to squirt out that last little bit of liquid so that the pipette itself is completely empty. And you've just delivered 2.6 milliliters of liquid with the serological pipette. So that's basically it. To quickly review, we looked at the two different types of pipettes. We've got the volumetric, which has the bulb and the single marking, and the serological, which is graduated like a graduated cylinder. When transferring, squeeze the pipette bulb first, place the plastic part onto the end of the pipette like so, gently let up, and do not be afraid to go above the liquid level. Be gentle with the pipette bulb. Don't just kind of let it all come up at once because then you'll pull liquid into the pipette bulb, but you're welcome to go above the line, and that's the easiest thing to do. When you're holding the pipette and pulling up liquid, hold it with your non-dominant hand near the top so that as soon as you remove the pipette bulb, you can cover it with your finger and it's sealed and the liquid won't escape. When you do that, gently twist to let liquid out to the level that you want it to um, be at when you're starting. For a serological, you can put it at the zero line and deliver by difference or you can pull up using the smaller numbers to the volume you need to deliver and squirt in everything, blowing out the last little bit of liquid. For the volumetric, just release your finger and let everything go, making sure not to squirt in that last little bit of liquid. Like I said before, don't let pipetting be a barrier to your success in chemistry lab. If you use proper technique, you can avoid things like air bubbles, and systematic errors, parallax errors, and, and stuff like that. So be careful when you're pipetting to maximize your chance of success in the lab.